Model Engineering for Beginners, this is part 12, and it's making a steam turret or manifold. Used for distribution of steam from the boiler to various steam operated devices. And these are the valves I'm going to use, and as usual I get them from Blackgate's engineering. The first thing to do is to find a suitable piece of brass bar and mark it out for the three valves. So a half inch from each end and then the middle of the bar should be fine. What you have to remember is that you need to rotate the valves to screw them in so there needs to be sufficient clearance between them to allow this to happen. I will of course be removing the union nut and the associated union cone from each of the valves before fitting them. So the clearance you require is just from the edge of the threaded part of the valve to the next valve. This is the larger of the two lathes I have in my workshop. It's very old, like me, and like a lot of the other stuff in the workshop but it's very accurate, and this is a four-jaw self-centering chuck. In the smaller of my two lathes, I generally just live with the three-jaw chuck, which gives me the facility for turning smaller components, and particularly small hexagon. So what I'm doing at the moment is just machining the end off the piece of bar. It's no good leaving it rough sawn. I take a nice clean cut across the end, and follow this with a centre drill to drill a hole in the end of the piece of brass bar. Then I use a twist drill, this is a 3 16ths of an inch diameter twist drill, and I drill all the way down the bar, but I do not want the twist drill to come out of the other end. So I make sure that I'm not going to do this, because if I come out of the other end, then more work has to be done. I would have to counter drill the other side, thread it, and put a plug in both sides. But I only want to put a plug in one side. What I'll have to do is counter drill it to a tapping size for 5 16ths 32, and just tap about a quarter of an inch of the end of it to take a blanking plug. 5 16 32 refers to the diameter, 5 16 of an inch, and 32 the threads per inch. This is a standard ME thread or model engineer thread, and these model engineer threads are very common in model steam engines. And in the time I've been talking about model engineer threads, you will notice that the centre hole in the piece of bar is almost complete. I'm now having to withdraw the drill a lot more frequently because I'm past the flutes and the brass chippings are then unable to clear and you do run the risk of drill breakage if you carry on. In this clip I'm enlarging the hole in the end of the bar with a tapping size drill to take a 5 16 by 32 thread. Proper engineers will not like this but what I always do is I use an imperial size drill which is two sizes down from the finished diameter of the thread. Here you can see the thread in the end of the bar. With the bar mounted in the drilling machine I can now drill the three holes in the front surface of the bar which will take the steam valves. I've marked them out so I know that I'm going to go in half an inch at each end. I do one end first, centre drill, followed by tapping size drill and again this is exactly the same tapping drill that I used to drill the end. Then I follow it through whilst it's still in the drilling machine with a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch tap. I turn this by hand, I do not use the drilling machine to turn this because it's too fast and it would probably break it. Further on in this tutorial you will probably see me using a tap in the lathe and I use the lathe under power. I know when to stop it and it's not going very fast, but really speaking you're better using your hand. There are of course special tapping attachments available for drilling machines and such like but unfortunately I don't have any of those. And for the man who commented on the last video that I made, I don't have a laser cutter either. In this clip I turned around the piece of bar in the drill vise, making sure that it was precisely in the same position, so that the other hole is exactly half an inch in from the end. And now I'm using a centre drill on the line which is in the centre of the piece of bar, and repeating the process for a third and final time. You may notice on this video that the drilling machine keeps moving around and this is because it's a pillar drill, it's a large pillar drill and it's not bolted to the ground and it moves around if I walk about near it. Which is distinctly odd because it sits on a concrete floor although it only seems to happen when I pull the handle. I must say that this is a terrible drilling machine. It's a large pillar drill, that's probably why it wobbles about as well and it's an English machine, made in England, but it's terrible. It drills the holes okay but the starting capacitor went, so I have to start it by spinning the chuck by hand. My lathes are English machines, and they're great. This is an old Smart & Brown Model 1024, 
It's a brilliant old machine. I'm sure this will outlive me and possibly my grandchildren. My other machine is much smaller and that's a Boxford. And what I'm doing in this one at the moment is facing the end of a piece of brass bar just to clean it up and make it square. I'm making the support column for the turret. After I faced off the end of the piece of bar, I used a centre drill to drill a small hole, then I drilled the hole much deeper with a tapping size drill for 2BA. A 5 16 by 32 thread is obviously 5 16 of an inch in diameter, but a 2BA just happens to be about 3 16 of an inch in diameter, so two imperial drill sizes less than 3 16 is the way to go. So one can say that a 5 30 seconds of an inch drill is a good tapping size for a 2BA tap. And now for a bit of freeform turning. This is a very simple process. This lathe is very heavy duty, so it will take quite a lot of metal off. If you're using a smaller lathe, don't be quite as brutal as this. The main purpose of this column is to support the top part of the turret. It does need to be a little bit ornamental without being too fussy. And this part is critical. It needs to be exactly the same diameter as the width of the top part of the turret. Brass is a very soft metal, and it's quite easy to dig in too deep. That's why my hand quickly flashed in front of the camera there to stop all the brass chippings from hitting the camera. This clip shows me parting off the piece, although it's all a little bit speeded up just to save time. One thing I didn't show on the video was the drilling of the hole in the other end of the standard, mainly because I forgot to press record on the camera. When I make these videos, I am actually doing the job for real, so that takes priority, and sometimes I just forget to press record. But I think you can figure out what I'm up to. The short piece of threaded bar sticking out of the top of the standard locates on the crossbar, and the hole in the base of the column is so you can use a bolt to mount the completed turret wherever you want to mount it. Once the turret components have been silver soldered together, the whole thing looks like this. As you can see, the component now has silver solder flux residue and some oxidisation, but after having been dangled in my acid bath for a while, it now looks like this. And after polishing up the part and fitting the taps, it now looks like this. And here is a view of the turret with the three valves in place. The valves are fitted with shim washers, which allows me to get them in the correct position, and also some Loctite 542 to make doubly sure they'll never leak. These steam valves are slightly unusual. They have a 5 16 by 32 thread on the body of the valve, but the outlets use 3 8 by 32. This will allow for the use of quarter inch pipe to feed steam to the steam engine or steam pump, but as well as quarter inch pipe, I'm also including some adapters to allow 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe to be used for smaller engines. So that's just about it. I just have to make the plug for the end, then it's complete. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.